I wanted to ask Ed Scruggs about the Plano, Texas mass shooting that occurred in September. And I bet a lot of people are saying right now, what? Yes, the Plano, Texas yes. mass killing where an estranged husband shot and killed eight people at a football party. Describe yes. what happened and the reaction. <laughs> uh, one of the biggest missed stories of the year, or at least the last several months, uh, was this mass shooting, which occurred in Plano, near Dallas, um, a football watching party, um, where an estranged husband, um, um, accused of domestic abuse, or at least heavily suspected, um, in the process of divorcing his wife or splitting up, um, she was holding a football watching party like they tended to do. Uh, during their relationship. He didn't like that. He showed up at the home in the middle of the party with an AR-15. They argued. He shot her. He entered the home. He shot everyone in the home and then was taken down by police and killed. This received almost no national attention on the news. I believe there was something in going on with the Russia investigation during that time or something to that effect, but it received almost no coverage. I may have seen one small crawl on CNN, and that's it, not one interview, not one report from the scene. And what, what's troubling about that is, one, we've become so desensitized that now um, nine deaths doesn't qualify as, as news, but that the domestic violence component. It, it is, it is again, as I think Sarah mentioned earlier, it is a common link in, in many mass shootings. And this almost was a textbook case uh, where it evolved into a mass shooting of a large scale. Uh, and uh, that was a direct connection. You can, you can link it to this case at the church shooting, domestic violence included. The first mass shooting in the United States in the modern history, well known to many, the 1966 UT Tower shooting here in Austin. That shooter, serious domestic violence against his wife. Uh, it, it's just a common thing. So I, I uh, we were we, the media did not have its eye on the ball when the Plano shooting occurred, and it really has just stopped covering all of the smaller shootings of murder suicides. The majority of those involve domestic violence, where perhaps a spouse is killed, perhaps a child, one other person. Um, that is happening all across the state and across this country. And uh, we have just either become desensitized or not interested in covering that. So it, it's um, people are shocked that this type of crime can happen um, in the church shooting in Texas. But the truth is, it has been happening on a rather large scale. But people have just not been paying attention, and that is that is very disturbing to me, and I think to many other people. And you were referring to Charles Whitman, the former Marine sharpshooter who took rifles and weapons to the observation deck atop the main building. Building tower at the University of Texas Austin opened fire for the next hour and a half, killed 15 people. Um, uh, ultimately, he was shot dead. Um, but again, began yes. with domestic violence. Now, I want to end with Sarah yes, Toff. And, and, yes, very yes, quickly, sir. Ed. I, and I would just say that that Whitman had a history of abuse himself, with a very abusive father and surrounded by violence and surrounded by firearms at a very young age. I think that's something, when you go into these cases and look at them, uh, you'll also find that with many of these shooters as well. So, you know, one way to attack um, gun violence is to attack domestic violence. We have a 10-year program to attack opioid addiction. Uh, we have a war on drugs. How about a war against domestic violence and spousal abuse? Uh, you'll, you'll not only cut that, but you'll also cut violence. That, that is what I would think. Sarah Tofty, we just have 30 seconds, but you just came out with a report for every town for gun safety around the deep connections between domestic violence and these mass killings. What is every town for gun safety recommending? Um, <clears throat> we have to address abusers' access to firearms. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And we can do that in so many ways, making sure they're prohibited um, from possessing firearms, making sure they turn in the firearms they own. And we, as a country, have to 
understand more the connections between domestic violence and firearm violence. We have to care more, not just for the victim, um, but for their families and for our entire communities. It is the way that we will prevent um, mass shootings in this country and the way that we can prevent everyday gun violence um, as it relates to domestic violence domestic violence, and we can do so much more. Sarah Tofty of Everytown for Gun Safety, speaking to us from Atlanta. Ed Scruggs, speaking to us from Austin, Texas, Texas Gun Sense. And George Tricarello Mar of Drexel University, speaking to us from Philadelphia. When we come back, the Paradise Papers, how do they implicate everyone um, from the current Commerce Secretary to the Queen of England? Stay with us.